You have a lot of really expensive equipment in your shop. Your customers' cars are often very expensive. But is that the most valuable part of your shop operation? I'm Doug Coffin with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to SOS Shop Owner Solutions. We're here today to talk about the dollars involved in running a shop and what really matters. We'll talk about those 3 a.m. panics, the nightmares that today's shop owners face, those things that either wake you up or keep you from falling asleep in the first place. This episode of Shop Owner Solutions is brought to you by Protractor, the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops. With dozens of integrations, linear parts and labor pricing, and great stability, it's no wonder that Protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry. Effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with our powerful, easy-to-use cloud-based solution. Visit ProtractorSoftware.com slash podcast to learn more. If you mention this podcast, you'll receive one month free. Our guest today is Brian Bates with Eagle Automotive, five locations in Littleton, Colorado. And Scott Thorley, who's president of AMS Protractor. And my partner here in the studio, once again, Vic Tarasic from Shop Owner Coach. Vic, you look around the shop. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dollars tied up in things. There is. Is that where the investment is really the the greatest for today's shop? Not at all. In fact, the investment the investment has always been in time. One thing about time. It's the most perishable thing we have. You might have a shop full of lifts, full of equipment, but time you can never get back. How well you manage that time determines a lot of how profitable your shop is going to be. So time is the most valuable thing we have. So it, when it comes right down to it, an automotive shop sells one thing and that's time. Now, the shop owner might go, well, I sell parts too. Well. You don't sell parts without selling time, it's hence labor. So the more effective we are at selling that that time, the more effectively your shop, the more effective your shop will be, and the more profitable it will be. So today we have Scott and Brian with us to go over some top shops, time management strategies, and how our listeners today can better manage their shop's time and sell more and become more profitable. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us today on Shop Owner Solutions. So, so let's talk a little bit about time management basics. So, Brian, at Eagle Automotive, how do you guys watch time? What do you do? What, what what do you have in place for your team to protect that most precious asset that your shop has? Well, the, the biggest tool we have, um, or the asset we have, is, is the people inside the building. Um, the, all the uh, technology in the world isn't going to make up for somebody that um, isn't uh, um, on track or in line with the company goals and, and the importance of time and making sure that we're utilizing and maximizing our time as best we can. Um, I look at the tools that we have as far as, uh, you know, something that uh, like a, a protractor tool that we use or um, an auto vitals tool or, or something like that, that that's, that's more like looking in the rear view mirror um, rather than um, looking out the windshield. So when you're driving a car, yeah, you want to look in the rear view mirror and kind of see where you've been, how you got there, check, you know, check some of the, uh, the vitals of, uh, of the trip that you're making. But really having your, uh, having your eyes looking out the windshield is the most important thing. And, and uh, knowing where we want to go, how we're going to get there, being all on the same page is extremely important to that. So the answer again to your question are the, uh, the managers, the leaders on the team. Okay. And, and so it starts with the, with the culture. That's what I'm hearing. The people who help you manage that time understand it. So essentially the shop owner's got to get buy-in from everybody to understand what that, that asset being, being time that's most valuable. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, we all need to manage a lot of things in our lives, but uh, the people that are going to make this happen and, and make your company successful are, are leaders. Um, and, and I remember there was a saying um, that I came across is that management without leadership is like straightening deck chairs on the Titanic. You know, I mean, it's, it's going down. Uh, it'll go down real nice and, and pretty or, you know, it's going to go down as a mess. But you really need that leadership. Um, and, 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 you know, just like cutting uh, a path through the forest, the management is how, how many miles can we get every day? How do we get the trees out of there? How do we do this? How do we do that? But the leadership is, is uh, when the guy climbs to the top of the tree and looks around and says, hey, we're going in the right direction or, hey, you know, we need to, we need to make a turn up ahead. We got, you know, we got something we need to deal with. So what does that look like in your shop? You know, you're talking about leadership. What does that look like? Could you, if, if you were talking to another, another shop owner, what would you tell them that looks like at, at Eagle? Well, I think it looks like um, a strong leader in the shop itself. So we have a shop foreman at, at each one of our locations. And that shop foreman works hand in hand with the store manager to make sure that everybody is communicating that the store manager um, tells the shop foreman, hey, this is what we've got going on today. Um, you know, spread the news to the team or this is what you need to manage if, if that shop foreman is the guy dispatching. And in some shops he is, in some shops um, the, the, the manager dispatches. Um, and then the shop foreman will come back to the manager and say, hey, look, we're, uh, we're going to need some more work because things are going really smooth or, hey, you know, we got some problems back here and just want to give you a heads up that uh, this, this, is, uh, th this is something we're dealing with and it's going to get us off track as far as how much time we think we're going to take or how much production we're going to get out of the shop today. Right. Okay. So we're, we're all busy. We're all working as hard as we possibly can. There's not a, you know, nobody has a free second anymore. The, the owner may look out in the garage and realize, or he'll look around and say, this guy's not working at all. This guy's working like a like a busy beaver. The 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 manager is seeing things this way. How do you really keep track and know when people are being efficient, when they're just being busy? Right. I, I think that comes back to having a mirror and uh, and and having a, a good electronic tool and a form that allows technicians and store managers to easily document what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis and then and then look at those trends um we can't make a decision um and, and chase our tail based on one good day or, or one uh terrible day we want to look at those trends and say hey overall um for this week or this month or this quarter this is where it looks like we have an area to improve so let's talk about that and get the team together and see how we can you know make things better um and and that's really what has changed, I think, uh, the most about time management over the last two decades is, you know, even when I started um, my own shop and, and for about 10 years after I started, so somewhere around the mid, you know, 20 teens, we, uh, we were still using flag sheets and, um, and they, they were very effective, but you had to, you know, tally them up. You had to, you know, make sure that everybody was punching in, punching out the darn time clock would you know, go, go on the fritz and <laughs> to buy another $500 time clock to, to make sure that, you know, guys had something, but the, um, the, the advent of tools like what Scott has, um, to offer really allows the activity to be documented by the, by the software so that it's really fairly seamless as long as, um, the technicians and the managers are doing basic, um, basic functions, right? You know, clicking on this button, starting a job, stopping a job, that sort of thing. And, uh, and I know, um, even recently protractor came out with a, another update to their time clock as well. And Scott can speak to that a, a little better than I can, but, um, you know, uh, I, on our last episode, I said that we, we were doing a function last night and that function was um, getting all the shop foreman and the managers um, after work and going through time management and, uh, and, and getting everybody on, on the right page. Cause we did switch over to protractor last year and, and we've uh, slowly been, you know, dialing that in. And one of the uh, things that um, is a huge area to improve all, all the, the easy, you know, things right now are, are, uh, are already done. 
but we're at the point now where we really need to fine tune and dial in that time management because every minute counts. We, we did a, a calculation last night and every minute was worth $5. Um, so, you know, I, hmm. I know Vic probably, um, took the, the time management class with RLO probably when Bob was still teaching it. Um, and, uh, and I think Bob and Dan were kind of trading off a little bit when I went through it, but, um, they, they, they had a scenario where you have a, a, a car that needs to be pushed in. And the question is, is it cheaper to, uh, call a tow truck and have the tow truck do it? Or would it be better to take three technicians off of what they're doing and have them push the car in? And the answer is, you know, once you do the calculations, very clear, call a tow truck and leave those other technicians alone. So, uh, so, so that's how valuable it is and how much time you can gain, you know, how much, uh, revenue you can gain or how much revenue you can lose if you're not making those decisions and making sure that you're utilizing, um, your resources properly and making sure that the technician is, is, you know, doing what he needs to do in order for him to earn a good um, paycheck and in order for the company to uh, profit. Scott, before you talk about the next generation of, of uh, time management, let's go back to how it has changed from, you know, from those old paper days, you know, walk us through, you know, some of the evolution of, of um, you know the the efficiencies that that products have created for the uh, uh, for the shop owner today. Okay, yeah, and it's in working with a lot of different shops, you know the uh, and I think Vic said it. It's it's the most perishable resource, right? Technician hours is is really the the most important thing that you have to plan for. If you, if you equate it to a restaurant, right, you gotta, you gotta know how much steak to order and how much fish to order. And you don't know exactly how many people are coming through the front door and shops have that exact same challenge. And if they don't use a technician hour today, it doesn't carry over to tomorrow, it's gone. So you have this challenge of, if you have five techs, you may have 40 hours that you're trying to fill in a day. So, Back when you did the old, you know, paper schedule, right? It was almost impossible to quickly see how much you had in a particular day. Um, one person could access it at a time, right? It was a, it was a big challenge. So Protractor uh, kind of splits out what I call future scheduling and today's scheduling, right? Future scheduling is all about looking at what does my next week or two look like and how many hours do I have coming in, and. Oh, by the way, even if you get that perfect, it's not perfect because when a car comes in for an oil change, you have no idea if it just needs that oil change or it's going to need three hours worth of work. So it's a it's a really big challenge for shop owners. But you want to book out those future days. So I have, you know, let's say I, I know, you know, I'm going to have 40 hours. I may want to book to 30 hours. So it gives me some time for those upsells. And then when you get to the day of, you get a lot more granular and Protractor has this nice digital job board screen where you can really look at each technician, what jobs they have in priority order. It time stamps it for you for approximately when they should be done with each job. You can even see when they clock in and out of a job, you can see a little time clock icon. So at, in one screen, you can see what all of your technicians are working on. So those, those, those two pieces, I think really, you know, I said what, what's what's changed over the years have really allowed shops to try to dial in. What do I need to do more marketing for to try to bring people in the front door over the next two weeks? And then when I get to the day of how do I really see what everybody's working on, what the load for each technician is, where do I need to step in and make some decisions to move things around? Um, so those are the tools that shop owners can use to help with this challenge that they face every single day of how do we maximize our technician hours. The flexibility just seems to be uh, critical, especially when it comes to the, the walk-in customers. Yeah, you can plan for those those repairs on the way out, but for the guy who just shows up and says, my car's making this noise. Yeah, boy, that can throw everything off. And your time, your, your, your well-executed plan, as Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get smacked in the face. You know, um, Doug, you're, you're right. Is and that's one of the the uh, the challenges and the opportunities with managing your time properly. And I love um, the fact that that Scott is talking about future and 
past, right? And because right now, especially this time of the year, one of the, uh, the the biggest challenges we have is that we have a huge demand on um, on getting in vehicles into the shop. We, we've basically got more demand than we do have supply, and so if you don't manage that properly, it, it, that can be as uh, detrimental as not having any cars at all. Um, getting people in and disappointing them because you, you've overpromised, and and now we're just glazing over the uh, the inspection and and we're just selling features, but we're not talking about benefits. All that stuff is, is extremely detrimental. And so having a clear cut um, plan as far as saying, hey, look, let's look at the trends. On average, we, every car that comes in is um, 2.8 hours. So um, we have X amount of capacity in the back. So if every car is 2.8 hours, we need 15 cars today. And um, one of the things that we do at our at our shops is we say, well, if we can get 15 cars in, um, let's go ahead and schedule 10 cars. Because what we want is we want to be that hero when somebody says, hey, look, I need an oil change. I need it today. Can you get me in? And it's 9 o'clock in the morning. We say, yeah, we've got a slot for you. Same thing with that you know, valuable customer that comes in and, and uh, you look and you go, oh my gosh, that's Joe. And he's, you know, he's got a fleet of vehicles and he's got kids and his wife and all of his neighbors come see us. And he walks in and says, I've got this weird noise and I got a busy day today. And, you know, is this something you guys can get in and get a look at it? Um, if you're already booked up at nine o'clock, you know, you're, you're, you're probably going to disappoint somebody. And the risk is that they go somewhere else and get attracted by that company. So, um, knowing when to stop bringing customers in is as important and sometimes more important than, um, knowing, uh, or than, than trying to get as many in as possible. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that there's a chance to say no to people. <laughs> You know, um, one of the things that I that I really like about um, Dan Gilly and Bob O'Connor is um, they never they, they always said never never tell somebody no. Tell them what you can do for them. They, that's what people want to hear. They don't want to hear what you can't do for them. So we uh, we just say, hey, we can get you in on this date or this date. Which one would you prefer? And it's really a negotiation, right? I mean, it's just as much of a negotiation as uh, as selling the, uh, the the work itself is when can I get you in? And they're wanting to get in like right now in a lot of cases. In some cases, um, we, we had, a, uh, had a morning huddle yesterday and one of the shops that we just brought on, um, you know, a few weeks ago, they they, they're they're being overrun. Um, don't have enough technicians uh, to to take over or take care of the capacity of what's coming in. And I said, you know, start out two weeks and then move your way back in. Don't start out today and then move out two weeks. So um, somebody calls in and says, "Hey, I need an oil change." Um, say, "Oh, great! I've got an appointment two weeks from now. Would that work for you?" And if they say no, then you say, "Okay." Well, how about next week? Would that work for you? And you just kind of try to dial them in. And I and I um, told this uh, this manager. Um, I said you'd be surprised how many people when you say I have an appointment two weeks from now, they say okay, yeah, let's do it then. Um, because in all actuality, the, the the type of shop that we run and the type of shop that a, a professional organization like Protractor is selling to, we are, we are marketing to planners. We're not marketing to people that live in crisis, and so. If somebody is in crisis and they're one of our customers, we want to have a very well-run, organized shop that um, has the ability to pivot a little bit and to take care of somebody without it being a, a, a chaotic situation, right? So I, I, so I'm going to come to Scott on this one. So Protractor's timekeeping module. It allows a shop owner to track productivity and efficiency pretty easily. Yes. So, you know, you kind of touched on, you know, in, in the shop, you're actually tracking three different hours, right? You're tracking the build hours you sold the customer. Mm -hmm. You're tracking the clocked hours and people may call these slightly different things. The clock or actual hours, which is how long it took the technician to actually do the build hours. And then you have attendance hours, right? And so you have your different proficiency, efficiency, productivity numbers. So Protractor allows you to track all those three really well. And you can track it 
by the employee. You can also, which I think is very important, track it by like the service category you're working on, right? So you may you may have one technician that's really efficient at break jobs and another technician that's not, right? You wanna know that data point. So when you are really busy, you may wanna optimize that. And when you're not as busy, you may wanna train the guy who's not as efficient. So Protractor can track all three of those hours for you and allow you to report out um, a bunch of different ways so that you can better understand your staff, figure out who needs help, who doesn't, who's strong in one area versus the other, and play to everyone's strength. Okay. So Brian, when you were, you were at the dealership world, you did flag sheets. And it, it, that was when probably when you got your first exposure to efficiency and productivity. And I know that we, we you know, when we were in the group together, we did our flag sheets and we tracked you know, each other's efficiency and productivity. And national average on productivity is 60%, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's 6.2 hours a day is, is what's, what's sold. For a shop like yours, there's a technician shortage I'll, 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 if, if you didn't have such a well-run organization. But industry-wide, is do you think with the 60% productivity, it is a dire technician shortage? Right. You're, you're uh, hitting on a pretty hot topic right now, right? I mean, do we need more technicians in our shop or do we just need to utilize the technicians that we have better? Um, and uh, and, and I, I think at first you start, hey, do we have the ability to get this work done and uh, with the people that we have? Otherwise, we're just throwing people and money at, a, at an inefficiency. And that's not a good way to run a business. Um, it's not even a good way to run a government, but um, we'll, we'll say that for a different day. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, um, this is really the key to um, starting out when you're looking at, hey, we're trying to dial our shop in at a higher level and give um, back to serve the, the people that work inside the shop um, much better. Not only the, the technicians, but also the service advisors because their paycheck and their success rides on how well the shop is run and how quickly when they do sell work, how quickly it can get done so they can get another um, another job in. So it, it's uh, it, it is interesting and I and I look at what the average per bay is for the nation and how much the average technician produces and, and whatnot and and I'm thinking well they're either um, taking in shops that, that you know and in in those surveys that are not like ours or there's a huge problem out there and, and I want those technicians that are standing around working for me right totally <laughs> and, uh, right. And we know that uh, the the people that um, we have in our building, if we're not keeping them busy, that somebody else is going to tell them how busy their shop is and how they they have better opportunities there. So, so there's a ton of dynamics here, and I think um, you know if if you're running a shop and you're just trying to run it by um, you know the seat of your pants, then you're you're depending on how how good your intuition is, you can compete but i don't think you're going to compete nearly as well as somebody that's actually you know moving into the science part of it and matching that with the human side of it which is you know taking care of the uh, the, the team members that are on your team and really setting goals and, and purpose and you know principles that sort of thing hey look you're talking math you're talking science i just want to fix cars <laughs> <laughs> this episode of shop owner solutions is brought to you by protractor the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops with dozens of integrations linear parts and labor pricing and great stability it's no wonder that protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with the powerful easy to use cloud-based solution visit protractorsoftware.com slash podcast to learn more and if you mention this podcast you'll receive one month free uh again when we we're talking the uh the joke about i don't want to fix cars i or i don't want to do math and science i just want to fix cars obviously that's a huge part of the world today and a huge part of the technicians uh, or the, the the shop owner's job but uh scott talk about uh how the different um components that a shop owner has to deal with all integrate into this time management um, uh, 
the time management in quotes uh, part of their day. You mentioned the uh, you know I, ju I just want to fix cars and uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a really big fan of the E Myth books right that, that talk about kind of the entrepreneur's dilemma where you start off you just want to fix cars and you figure if you fix cars well and you keep customers happy that's all you need to do. And you really, if you want to be a successful business owner, you really need to take that next step, which is working on the business versus in the business. And that's where I think Protractor gives you some of the tools to be able to do that, right? Uh, you know, Brian talked about there's so many different, we're, and we just, you know, right now talking about the, the time clocks type things, tracking those numbers, but the shop owner needs to look at, you know, car count and trends and gross profit margins on parts and labor overhead expenses, all these different things. So uh, with a tool like Protractor, we can put a lot of those data points in front of you and some easy to use dashboards and, and be able to see a lot of KPIs on one screen. Because when you see data, to, to me, when you see data on one screen, things start to jump out, right? If, if you look at your parts GP by service category, all of a sudden it's going to jump out if one of them's off, right? And then we give you the ability to drill down and figure out why that one's off. But you don't want to drill down into every single category. You want to see which one's off and then be able to drill down and figure out, is there a reason behind it or is there something I need to do to fix it? But we need to give you that big picture first so that you can, the owner can optimize his time, right? Where is my issue? Now let me spend time drilling into that issue that I need to fix. And that's, uh, like I said, that's one of the, the best things Protractor can do for a shop is to allow you both that big picture view as well as the ability to drill down when you need to figure out where is the actual problem I need to go work on. You just mentioned a, a, a key word. Um, you know, when you're working on a particular component on a vehicle, you're changing a tire, you're... Uh, working on brake lines, your, whatever it is, you need to have the right tools to do the job. When you're in the office, this is a tool. This is really a tool that, that can help you do the job the right way. Correct. And at one of the best things for me, just about uh, being involved with Protractor and helping out shop owners, is that ability to, to really help the shop owners uh, you know, some of the shop owners like Brian are, are really good business owners. They've been doing it for a while. Some shop owners are, you know, two months into the job and don't know what they're doing and being able to kind of talk with them and help them and just kind of point them in the right direction. And, and we're not we're not coaches by any stretch, but we just want to provide a tool, you know, and, and how to use the tool. So if you're going to spend the money and, and, you know, in shops, there are lots of expensive tools, right? And you need to spend time training on those tools. You know, Protractor is the most used tool in a shop because you're using it for every single customer, every single day. And uh, shops need to put that same kind of training into their shop management system so that they use it to its full potential and get out of it what they're investing into it. So, so one of the things that, you know, I want to talk about time managed for a second. One of the things that I, I use when I talk with my coaching customer is using tracking time track time management as a diagnostic tool to find the issues in your shop see what technicians feel like if you're clocking in and clocking out on a job you're trying to manage them you're trying to look over their shoulder mm -hmm. the trick that I'll give shop owners who aren't looking to or who are looking to get into tracking time is to get buy-in with your technicians you want to talk to them from the standpoint, we're not looking to manage you. We're looking to manage the entire organization. Because if a tech's not busy, well, that's the owner's problem because he's the rainmaker. If there's if there's not cars on the lot or if a part's not coming out in, t in time, that's the advisor issue. Well, th that'll show up in productivity. Efficiency can also reveal whether they're underselling the job up front or a low efficiency can will show a technician's inability to do a job in a timely manner. It'll reveal a training opportunity. So it, time management, is, it's, it's a really cool diagnostic tool. And I, you know, Brian, you probably you, utilize that in your shop. Is it that use of the diagnostic tool? Yeah. 
Well, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Vic, on a few things. One is the uh, the buy-in and making sure that we don't have a environment where technicians or anybody feels like there's Big Brother there. And, and um, we do run an organization where, where we're a team and, uh, and we try to run it as flat as possible so that um, – everybody understands that the leaders are servant leaders they're not uh, they're not dictatorial leaders and that they're there to serve them um to make sure that the job gets done right so that they can serve the customer so um the the systems uh, serve the team and we don't serve the systems that's another principle that uh, that we go on um is that you know hey we don't want to re um reconfigure our organization so that it fits and serves some system that we're looking to buy we want a system that's going to serve us as closely as possible and, and fit in and, and if we do have to make some changes then, then that's fine but we're, we're not you know servants to the system the uh the other thing is um vic you, you kind of talked about people feeling or, or not buying in and one of the easiest ways that i've found to get buy-in is really explain it the way that i see it uh, and, and that you know that's true to me which is we are looking to improve the technician's ability to um, to produce more work, and uh, most uh, most technicians, even if they're hourly, have an incentive to bill hours, or they have a minimum required hours that they need to do, or minimum efficiency, um, all, all those sorts of things. So there there is an incentive to come in and uh, and make you know a, a productive shop or have a productive day. So when you explain it like that, and really what you're saying is, hey, this is a tool that you can use to tell me how you spend your day. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason you're having a tough time meeting um, the, the flat rate time, let's say, you know, um, a job is a five hour job and it took you six hours, that's not necessarily a bad um you know, uh, it's not necessarily something that reflects poorly on the technician. That could um, be a lot of things. And, uh, and again, you know, seek to first understand before we jump to conclusions, because I think a lot of times when, um, <laughs> when, when, when uh, you have a hammer, everything's a nail, right? So yeah. you, uh, you know, you look at this program and you say, okay, well, now I found where the problem is. Joe's not productive. You know, we give him a five-hour job. It takes him seven hours to do it. And you talk to Joe and you say, hey, Joe, you know, you need to hurry it up. This just isn't, gonna, isn't going to uh, fly. Get with it and you walk away. You know, that, that's not really doing anybody any service. And what, you know, what, what needs to happen is to understand, hey, Joe, why did it take you this long? And if Joe said, you know what, I just, you know, knew how important this was and if I made a mistake, I, so I took my time on that job. Or, you know, I'm trying to use these tools and I'm using duct tape and wire and, and needle nose pliers and, you know, and a claw hammer to try to get this job done. And you go, my gosh, what, you know, what's the right tool? And they tell you what the right tool is. And, okay, well, we need to get that tool in the shop or the, you know, the, the lift, the garage door, any of those items that really slow people down. Um, that That's the environment that you want to say, hey, look, this is an environment that is successful. Successful. And even if somebody is still able to be highly productive in this environment, you don't blame the guy that isn't there. You want to make sure that, uh, or that isn't able to do that. You want to make sure that that environment is optimized so that even the guy that's able to do it can even produce more and you can improve that so that the guy that's doing 12 hours a day, maybe he's a guy that could do 18 hours a day if you had the proper equipment, tooling, and uh, you know communication and, and workflow and parts deliveries, all that sort of stuff. So I found that technicians are very receptive to that, and uh, and and the one trump I I, I kind of reserve, but I, I'll pull it out of my sleeve every once in a while. Is you know, hey, look, this is actually designed to measure the advisor's ability to keep you busy working on jobs and get you the parts in a timely manner. So we're not we're not measuring you; we're measuring advisors, and sometimes they're like. Yeah, that's where the problem is. <laughs> yeah, finally somebody gets it. Yeah, finally so, somebody yeah. understands. <laughs> but it, and the you know, old saying is always blame the advisor. But honestly, in the shop, it is the it, it the bulk of it rests on the advisor's shoulder. Sure, but in and this that's case where, too, that's where we start. In this case too, I think the uh, um, some of the uh, some of the challenge needs to go to the shop owners, and, and I'm sure you both know guys. All, all three of us know people who. Look, I'm a shop owner. I'm too busy to learn a system like this. I've, I've, I can only do what I'm doing now. How do you get started? You know, what do you, what's the, what's the process of, of, okay, I guess what does it take to get, <laughs> to get so far behind or so far down? 
that this becomes the uh, the answer to your problems. Well, well I'll I'll kind of speak to us and. and you know, maybe Scott can uh, speak on, on what he sees as a general um, trend amongst all shop owners. But we um, we know that it has to be a culture within the shop that the technicians have buy in and that they're committed to it, and and that you know we continually reinforce that time management is something that we look at and we use as a tool to uh, to improve things at the shop and, and to identify where the the, uh, the improvements are um, are available right um, and, it, and it does need to be a culture and so sometimes it can take uh, take quite a bit and, and you have to kind of you know be more stubborn than uh, than the guys that are working in the shop but you know reasoning with the technicians that's usually where most of the kickback comes from but also making sure that the uh, tools that you use are, are easy enough to where it's not something that's going to take them you know 5 10 15 minutes every hour to uh, to manage um to to continually document and uh and, and again i know there's a ton of tools um we've been with auto vitals for close to eight nine years now um with their their smart flow program and so the thing that i like about them is they actually integrate in with protractor so when the technician pulls up a job hit start they can hit finish and uh and then it starts uh, moving into um protractors so that we can use both the auto vitals uh, time management reports as well as the uh, protractor um, reports and, um, and and that does need to be as simple as possible I, I think the biggest problem with the flag sheets was that somebody would um, you know forget to use them or the the time clock was clear on the other side of the shop so i just you know to stop what i'm doing go take my time clock all or my card all the way out there punch in punch out all that sort of stuff so um so that that, that seems to be the key with both of them and making sure you know i mean and it starts at the top is making sure that everybody realizes that um this is a team effort and this is what we need the technicians to do this is what we need the, the service advisors the manager this is the role that i play as an owner my general manager manager plays a role and that we're all trying to achieve the same common goal it's not you know you all are here to serve me so that i can fuel up my learjet to, to fly off for the weekend it's hey look we're trying to you know build a company where we all win right yeah, and i'd like to just add on that you know you, you talked about kind of getting started with this and, and to me you know, the shop management system is a tool and, and i'll use the exact same example used on the tech right tech's taking too long on a break job uh, because he doesn't have the right tools for me the shop management system should be a tool for the shop and so if your current system is doing everything you need and you're making the money you need and you're getting everything scheduled right i say don't change right it's when you realize that you're not optimizing things you're you don't have we have linear parts and labor pricing which allows you to maximize your profit um service advisors we talked about them briefly right the, the service advisors a lot of times people think the service advisor's job is to write that ticket but it's really to build that relationship with the customer because he really needs to build that trust so he can sell the business writing a ticket is just something he has to do to keep the rest of the shop running so we try to give that service advisor a lot of tools to write tickets faster than in any other system whether it's canned jobs or taking a past service and being able to put it right back on a ticket for that vehicle to looking up every part and labor on a ticket at once instead of one at a time those time saving things for the service advisor gives them more time to spend with the customer and really build that rapport which is really important and while they're doing that you need to have that communication in place so that the technician knows what to work on without having to come up and talk to the service advisor who's busy talking to the customer or taking care of some other issue. So it really does, you really need to look at your shop and say, okay, I'm I'm ready to take it to the next level. I've outgrown the system I have today. I wanna to look at something else. And when you get to that point, the kind of learning a new system is easier because you see the, the purpose behind it, right? If, if you think you're changing to a new system for, for not a good reason, you're not gonna be incentivized to really learn the system and figure out how to do it. But if you know it's solving a problem for you, you're gonna go figure out how to use that system to solve that problem. And that, that works out best for everyone. Speaking of customers, what are some of those common time sucks that advisors, techs, owners deal with on a daily basis? 
Well, you know, the, the obvious ones are, uh, you know, there's not a parts guy in the room, so I'll, I'll you know, say that not getting the right parts, or getting the, you know, not, not getting the parts at the right time or um, getting, uh, you know, things being miscataloged. Those, those things take a lot of time or, you know, you get a, get a part and uh, you, you put it on and it, you know, doesn't. Um, it doesn't work properly or um, it wasn't diagnosed uh, properly or that was part of the diagnosis. So aside from that, um, I, I, you know, my experience is that a lot of times what happens is that the, the front is not in tune with what the back, um, the, you know, the, your front counter is not in tune with what your technicians are doing and vice versa. So they really don't understand and they don't work together in a, a choreographed uh, manner. Um, so I've, I've run into, you know, walked into, you know, one of my shops, you know, and it's not one particular, but, you know, I could walk in and see the service advisors and the manager, um, running around and say, Hey, how's it going today, man? We're so busy. Gosh, you know, there's so much work, yada, yada. And, uh, and my, uh, my, my favorite saying is that, you know, if you want to feel good about how things are going, you know, ask the, the advisors and the, and the manager. And if you want to know the truth, go back and talk to the technicians because <laughs> they will tell you exactly where all the problems are. Um, they're, they're, they're wired that way, right? Technicians are, are wired to make you happy or I'm sorry, advisors are wired to make you happy and technicians are wired to find the problems and point them out. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, you know, you, you go into the back and you ask those guys, how's it going? And it's like, man, we're, you know, we're not very busy. We're standing around or waiting on these parts or yada, yada. And, uh, and, and so then I, I'll go back to the front. So, uh, how, you know, are your technicians busy? Yada, yada. And, and they're, oh yeah, you know, we got it. Everybody's working and, and, and say, Hey, look, I just went back there and you got guys standing around. Do you know that? holy cow are you serious and <laughs> and so then it's like hey come back here let's talk to the technicians and and let's you know um because because you know worst case scenario you walk in and you hear them turning a customer away mm -hmm. somebody says hey look I, I need an oil change today sorry we just can't get you in you know can we get you in tomorrow that sort of thing you go back there and there's a technician standing around so that that to me are the the biggest uh, time stocks um not scheduling properly is a, is another uh, huge area where you know y you can uh, you can lose a lot of time um you know ha in both sides if it's if it's way too busy um you can have technicians that just don't have the time to do something properly and the same thing with the advisor and if you don't have enough cars then you have uh, technicians that um, have shown up and they're not being utilized and like Vic said you know those hours are kind of you know like spoiled milk you got to you know they're, they're gone there's, there's there's no um no getting them back or selling them tomorrow the oil filter it's still on the shelf tomorrow we, we'll sell that one again but the, mm -hmm. the time it's gone every every minute is just a decaying asset and one of the other you, you mentioned the customers one of the things that i see sometimes is a i don't know an unexpected uh misuse of time is when checking in customers some shops uh, really want to make that check that check in process as quick as possible. Drop the keys. Here's my car. I want an oil change. And yes, you may save a couple seconds up front, but it's going to cost you a lot more time on the back end if you don't have the if you don't look up the history of that vehicle and say, you know what, last time we recommended that that you have your brakes done because they were wearing down. Well, now you're going to send it back to the tech. He's going to do an inspection. He's going to find it again. And say you know what i found it the last time too and the customer now is sitting waiting maybe for a half hour oil change and it really needs to be a two-hour job so spending the time with the customer when they check in and this gets back to that service advisor having the time to do that and really having that conversation and looking at the history and looking what are the maintenance items that are due and what are the deferred items that are due and having that complete conversation and setting their expectations i think saves you a lot more time in the long run than just trying to check them in as quickly as possible and moving on to the next customer. All right, checking the boxes. All right, well, gentlemen, let's go ahead and we'll hit a couple of high points from today. I appreciate you guys spending the time and sharing your talents with us. So first off, time is perishable. And as, as Brian said, it all starts, you know, proper time management starts with your people. Technician's time value could be five, $5 a minute as it is at, at Brian's shop. A protractor will help you with workflow management, time tracking, and setting internal expectations. Book your day to allow 
for drop-ins using the reserve time technique. And know when you need to reschedule. Don't say no, but know when to reschedule. Tell them what you can't do, not what you can't do. Get buy-in from the team and let the system, the timekeeping system, serve the team. Timekeeping will reveal areas that, 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 are, that you were doing well and areas that, you, that need attention. And once you realize the technician's value per minute, implement time tracking, you wish you'd implemented, adopted, or perfected it sooner. Remember, time is your most perishable asset and capturing as many billable hours will benefit you, your team, and everyone involved in your organization. Famous basketball coach John Wooden said, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? I'd like to thank our guest today, Brian Bates with Eagle Automotive in Littleton, Colorado, as well as Scott Thorley, president of AMS Protractor. Protractor is the premier shop management solution for multi-bay and multi-location shops with dozens of integrations, linear parts, and labor pricing and great stability. It's no wonder that Protractor has some of the most loyal customers in the industry. Effortlessly manage all aspects of your shop operations with the powerful, easy-to-use cloud-based solution. Visit ProTractorSoftware.com slash podcast to learn more. And if you mention this podcast and receive one month free. Brian, Scott, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a, uh, uh, a great amount of time we've spent today. And I appreciate the, uh, the value that you've brought to the table. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Vic. Thank you guys for being here. Yep. And on behalf of my partner, Vic Trasic, thanks for being here. We'll talk to you again soon.